Oklahoma Bridges here, and today we're going to take a look at two and four minute gearing on Edison Home and Edison Triumph phonographs. And I want to start this discussion by discussing the Edison Home Model D phonograph and the two and four minute gearing on these machines. And what I'm going to discuss on this machine is going to also apply to the Model D Triumphs and several of the machines made afterwards. Um, but keep in mind, some of the later machines had the two-minute feature blocked off, and I'm not going to discuss that. This information applies to only the Home and Triumph models, and models which use the Triumph Top Works mechanism. So, the Home and the Triumph machines were unique in that they used the, um, the older, original style of lead screw arrangement where the mandrel which holds the record and the lead screw which drives the reproducer carriage across the record are mounted on the same shaft and as a consequence of that the lead screw will have the same number of grooves or threads per inch that the record has and um, until about 1908 all records were 100 threads per inch. That is, for every one revolution of the record of the mandrel, the reproducer carriage was advanced one one hundredth of an inch across. When the four minute records were introduced, the records were made with 200 threads per inch, and this meant gearing had to be introduced on the machines to have the rate at which the carriage moves across the record. The Model D machines were uh, equipped from the factory with this gearing necessary to play both um, two and four minute records and it does that with a clutch and gearing mounted in the drive pulley on this side of the machine. So, let's take a look at what's going on here. Let's start with looking at what's going on here on the drive end. Instead of the um, the cone bearing that most of the um, cylinder machines had before, there is a bearing which looks like this, which fits in the end stanchion on the machine and has a small sleeve bearing which fits inside a hole on the end of the main shaft like so. This gear has a number of teeth on it which mesh with another gear mounted on the pulley with the same number of teeth. These two gears have the same number of teeth so they have a one-to-one -one ratio between them. On the other side of the pulley is another small gear and also a series of holes. Driving the feed screw and connected to the feed screw is a clutch casing and this is a Model D home clutch casing and here on the feed screw are a pair of pins which engage these slots in the clutch casing. Now if I shift the clutch casing to a neutral position you can see I can get the um, the gearing there in a position mid-gear where it freewheels and so you can very clearly see that the feed screw revolves on the main shaft but is not actually attached to the main shaft. Depending on whether you want to select two minute or four minute depends on where this clutch uh, receives its motion from. In the two minute position to play the regular two minute records there are two prongs on the clutch which engage any two of these pair of holes here on the pulley. Okay, So that gives you direct drive 
for two minute playing. So now the lead screw or feed screw is running at a one to one with the main shaft and pulley and it will move forward at a hundred threads per inch. To play a four minute record you pull the clutch casing out so that this little gear here will engage with the gear that's exactly twice its size to give a two to one reduction and you shift the gears like this there is a flange provided on the clutch casing for that purpose and now that gives you a two to one gear reduction the lead screw now revolves at half the speed of the mandrel and main shaft and it will now advance the carriage across at a rate of 200 threads per inch and that will allow you to play the four minute record so let's go over that again so you can see the operation that's the position for playing a two minute record that's a position for playing a four minute record. It's very important that all these parts be adjusted correctly for that to work properly. Uh, and these machines, as old as they are now, a variety of things can happen. Uh, this is an Edison Home Model D, which I featured the motor in a previous series of videos. And this is the original mandrel and main shaft that was on the machine when I purchased it and you can see there are a pair of grooves right here for the detent which indexes the clutch in the four or two minute position and some previous owner drilled a hole in the shaft and enlarged the hole for the detent pin in the clutch and fastened them together so that the machine was permanently blocked into the two minute only position. It's very important therefore that you check a machine and if you cannot get the clutch to shift over and you have a Model D machine and I think some of the others um, other models are two and four minute only. Some of the later models became four minute only where it was permanently blocked in the four minute position and you could not shift it back and forth and um, you've really got to kind of pay attention you can't really see it except as a little ghost mark here uh, maybe the camera will pick this up but there's the remnants of a little gold decal that used to be here that says minute with an arrow pointing at a four and an arrow pointing at a two and that's to tell you which way to move the clutch casing in or out to play either a two minute record or a four minute record. Uh, very important to um, pay attention to that. So in addition to the Model D phonographs, Edison also made kits to convert the earlier machines to play the four minute records also, the models A, B, and C. Now I don't have a Model C but I do have a Model A and a Model B Triumph, and I can show you what the kits look like and how to make sure that they're set up correctly. And so we'll take a look at one of those. In a moment, we're going to look at a two-minute machine that was converted to play two- and four-minute records, and it's worth looking at some of the parts side-by-side. These are both out of a Model A Triumph phonograph. This is the original um, two-minute rotating assembly off of the top works. The mandrel attached to the main shaft, which is also the feed screw, and then the drive pulley. And then, of course, on the drive end is a uh, 
cone bearing that fits in the uh, cup that's machined into the end of the um, main shaft. There's an identical bearing, that almost, that goes in the end gate end of the machine, and that end stays as is, although it might have to be adjusted back and forth a little bit when this is removed and replaced with a two and four minute assembly and then this gets replaced with this which goes in there and as this is held stationary and this all revolves around it it allows you to have the feed screw revolve at half the speed for playing the four minute record Now, in order to make all of this fit where this was, it has to be made quite a bit narrower than the way they designed it on the Model D machines. You see, this is quite generous. There's quite a bit of room to grasp that with the fingers to move the casing in and out. This one, it gets to be a little bit of a challenge, and I'll demonstrate this a little bit on this machine here. Here's a Model B Edison Triumph that I purchased already fitted with a um, two and four minute kit which were oftentimes called by the Edison company as Model D attachments. In fact it's often confusing because sometimes the parts are stamped A, D, B, D, C, D depending on what machine they go on with an H or a T also if they are home or triumph specific. As I showed you previously, some parts such as the clutch casing here are different sizes depending on the machine and the pulleys are specific as well. And then this is a um, setup that is correct for this machine and it fits quite nicely on it record was loose uh, but it's kind of a pain in the ass to switch if I'm if I'm honest it's you've got to use your fingernail and sometimes it doesn't always want to shift easy it shifts a lot easier if you can if you can use both fingers to move it but you do not have a lot of room there to get your fingers behind the flange on the clutch casing to uh, to shift it and uh, <laughs> oops um, you see this is basically the exact same setup model A and B machines and uh, it leaves a little bit to be desired that that's not very accommodating well as a transitional fix and I don't have a picture um, some of the machines were provided with a little casting that goes on here with a lever and then the tail of the lever had a pair of fingers that rode on this um, flange on the casing so that when you move the lever back and forth it would move the casing back and forth. However, it still gives you the same disadvantage that you have when you try to move it with one finger at the edge. You're moving it out here and you're trying to cock it sideways like that, whereas it's better to move it from both sides at once like this. And that was a major deficiency on the um, early machines that was addressed with an improved version. So here's the improved version of the 2 and 4 minute mechanism for the Model A and Model B machines. And what it does is it eliminates the flange on the clutch casing and instead replaces it with a groove located on the hub of the clutch casing and then modifies the lever so that the tail has a pin which engages this groove and now it shifts much easier and then you also have a convenient legend since the kit was not provided with a decal to apply to your earlier machine to remind you which way to move the clutch the lever would have um, this little legend right here that it could point at 
And there are variations on this lever, and there should be a picture showing right now that shows you the two different styles of levers side by side. Uh, the instructions, though, tell you not to adjust it to where the lever points directly at the legends. Um, apparently, it was not uh, paid a whole lot of attention to um, how it would all be set up, just as long as it as it worked and the operator could understand what was going on sufficiently to not have any trouble using it. And as I said. This is the early style two and four minute conversion parts or model D attachment, and this is the later style. I don't know for sure a fast date on when the later style was introduced. The early style, of course, was introduced around 1908 um, when the model D machines were introduced, when the four minute wax records were introduced. It seems that by at least 1910 or 1911 um, the later style two and four minute kits were being uh, shipped instead of the early style and it seemed that they carried on with this style to the end and um, you can find if you pay attention to the original instructions you will notice there are different instructions for both um, types Okay, and here we are now looking at uh, two home photographs with a Model B in the foreground with the later style two and four minute gearing, and the Model D in the background, which of course came from the factory with the uh, four minute gearing. And once again, you can see the lever which is provided for moving the clutch casing back and forth and wind the machine up here so you can see it operate a little You can see this is the four minute position and this is the two minute position. And of course shifting this style is a little different. There is no lever, there is just the clutch casing that has to be moved back and forth. And you can shift it while it's running or while it's stationary most of the time. One thing that you should know about the machines with the later style two and four minute setup is that because of the way it operates to allow better engagement when going into the two minute position there are no holes for the pins to come into contact with instead there are a pair of pins sticking out that these pins merely strike up against when shifting to the two minute position and I can prove this to you without taking the machine apart by demonstrating that when it is in the two minute position, there it's in the four minute position, there it's in the two minute position, you will be able to get about a half a turn of free play on the feed screw before the pins on the clutch strike the pins on the pulley. This is normal. say have to with the machine stationary you'll notice that sometimes you have to rotate things slightly so that the gear teeth slip past each other instead of striking on the faces of each other 
I hope this clears up a lot of the operational uh, questions that you might have about the two and four minute gearing on the Edison Home and Edison Triumph machines. I'm sure there's things I'm going to leave out and you might have questions as a viewer on other items. Uh, that's what the comment section below is all about, so feel free to ask away. And as always, this is Oklahoma Bridges, and thank you for watching.